Good evening, everybody out there. Well, it is Saturday. It's been a long time since we had a... Uh, you guys forgive me if I sneeze. Candle scents. We're all over the place. Yes, sometimes guys make candles. It's a very special one. Anyway. It's turning out to be somewhat of an interesting day. I don't want to bring your day down, so I'm going to give you a small brief of uh, things that are happening today so that you guys are in the know, but always remember something. Everything that's happening that's transpiring, right? It's not out of control. It really isn't. It's, uh, it's being quite controlled. It is. In other words, things have to come about, right? If nothing comes about, well, that means we're all stuck here for a long time. And we know that's not the case. You're in the process of being delivered. Always think of something. I want everybody to think of this. Think of this one thing. You're in this world right now. You have personal issues or situations, circumstances. There are global circumstances, national circumstances, right? All of it, all of it is part of a process of deliverance of us. Consider yourselves in the womb. Just think of that. And you're soon to be born. That means with or without any happenings in the world, you will be leaving this place. Guaranteed you're going to leave this earth. Think about that. Tomorrow is not promised to anybody. You will leave this earth. You're going to leave. So never, never look at a day like somehow you're stuck here. You're not going anywhere. That's not true. You are leaving. And if you begin to change your perspective, and think in that realm of truth. That you won't sit around bored all day. You're going to start sitting around saying, uh, what is left to do? I know I've forgotten something. Once you leave, you're not coming back to undo or redo or do anything here, what you have done previously. You're not. You're leaving. And when you leave, everybody connected to your life, right? Right? They could still be stuck here. But you will most certainly leave. All of you are going to leave. You may not leave all at one time. It's guaranteed you're going to leave this earth. And all too often, we don't even think about that. So ask yourself something. If you were to go within a couple of days, is there anything you have left undone because you're going to leave everybody behind? Everybody, you're not going to miss anybody here on this earth either. You're going to graduate to a higher level of being. But is there anything that you can do right now that will assist anybody if you leave this earth? Have you left anything undone? Do you have any relationships that are somewhat sour? Maybe you didn't leave a message of encouragement or something. Is there something you can do prior to leaving this earth? that you know you have a responsibility of doing. Because you know what normally happens when you go on a trip? People always forget things. They never think about everything because they're not really thinking about the trip itself. People are going to leave kids behind. People are going to leave spouses behind. People are going to leave loved ones behind are they prepared is there anything you can do for them that you can enhance your life with leave them to encourage them before you go because once you go you cannot come back take note of that now if you start thinking along these lines do you know what happens you quit thinking how you quit thinking about the fact that you've been stuck here for a long time and you begin to 
process things very differently. Every day becomes a day that could be your last. And so you find yourself doing everything you can do for everybody around you. It's a certainty you're going to leave. Somebody, right, a group of people, they're leaving in two minutes. It could be one of you. It could be one of you. Think about that. You're leaving. Now, I'm going to update you guys on a few things that are happening in the world right now. And I hate to tell you, let's see, how can I explain this? Some of these things I want to tell you guys today are going to be very difficult to say. Very difficult. Very difficult. I don't want you guys to get alarmed. Don't get alarmed. But always think soberly. Okay? Always. And is listen, some people are numb to the fact that things are happening fast. A transition has come, right? An actual transition has come. Some people are not aware. Some people are they're caught off guard. They're going to be caught off guard. They're not ready. They're not, if they're not ready right now at this moment, they have no readiness. If their mind is drifting somewhere else, well, they're going to be in that state when things come. Because something is taking place right now. There are a great many people not aware of it. There will be folks caught off guard. There will be. I just don't want those people to be you guys. Things are happening all around you, especially today. Today is very different than, uh, we, and in fact, today is so different. I doubt that we've been through a day like this in, in uh, probably maybe 50 years, 50 or 60 years, or I'll say 70 years, 70 years. So it's been a long time. There are developing situations all over the place. Listen to me. There are things that you already know about. You already know about things. And uh, the world as we know it, right, is going to go through a few trials. Immediate trials. So I hope you guys are ready for that. But regardless of what takes place, Regardless, listen to me, regardless of what takes place, the Lord is your Lord. And all these things must come to pass. They have to come to pass. They are part of a bigger process. All pieces are intimate. They must come to pass. It is part of your deliverance. Everything happening on the face of the earth. It's happening for your deliverance. And yes, I'm aware of the violence that's taking place in quite a few places. In fact, by midnight, I do suspect at least 15 more cells to activate what they're calling their a reserve operation. That call went out early this morning prior to Israel. Actually, it came out prior to Israel's tactical uh, engagement. And, of course, there was a response. And, of course, that response caused priority in cell activity here in the United States. What you may not know is what's missing right now. Something is missing. I can't go into detail, but it's missing. And because it's missing, it's going to cost us dearly. And it's only been missing for about, I'll say about six hours. Maybe about eight hours. But it's gone. It's missing. I cannot go into detail of what's missing, but I'll tell you, it's going to change everybody's lives in this country and other countries. Because it's going to happen right here in this country. It's going to change everybody's lives. From, from the time it's used and forward. I cannot go into detail. And anybody who does, you're not going to hear from them again. 
Today is a very active day. It is. But again, have an understanding that many people are not prepared for what's taking place. Thank God that you are. Thank God that you've been, uh, obviously, you've been informed, right? There are some inevitable things that will take place. They're, they're better happening without me ever re-mentioning them again. I've certainly been prepared for them, and I hope you are too. But regardless of what happens, please don't be compromised. You guys see Pastor Paul's trying to call? Is that what you're saying? He's live? Well, let's see. Is he? Really? Let's see. Stand by, everybody. Let's check. We can check. Let's see. Am I wired up here? Probably not. Let's check. Oh, come on. Don't do this. Don't do it. Don't do it. Filters are active. It'll be about two minutes. Something here has to be scrubbed. It'll be about two minutes. Two minutes and I'll check and see. You guys, if you can, let, let, Pastor Paul, no, I can um, prepare to receive his call, okay? That'll take me about two minutes, okay? About two minutes. I need two minutes. Then we'll go from there. About two minutes, and we'll swap over. Hope nobody gets worn out today. And I certainly do hope that you all are, um, well, what can I say? You guys do understand also, just so just so you guys understand, don't get frustrated. Hear me on this. You know, things we have talked about previously, right? Beforehand. Let me just say something while the system is getting ready, because it will take about two minutes, I'll call. Yeah. Tell him two minutes. You guys let him know two minutes. I'm not on a telephone right now. I'm on a microphone. So two minutes for the uh, net to scrub and I'll be active. But things I've talked about in the past, sometimes I often distance myself from those conversations. Because they'll draw. Well, let's just say people know what you say when you're live like this on a microphone, right? They know what you say. They know what you're talking about. And they become just as curious as other folks. All too often, especially in the intelligence community, aside from finding things out from data, they want to look into spiritual, the spiritual aspect of things, right? And uh, when they do that, they start, they want to press for critical information. They do that quite a bit. For that reason and for others, because they can tie you up. They can just tie your life up in the wrong ways. But it doesn't pay for anybody to be 100% right all the time. It does not pay. So you've got to throw or, or distance yourself away from certain conversations so that every single thing you say is always plausible. That's called being wise. People want accuracy. They want, you know, facts and details. You can't do that. You can't do that. By the way, folks, listen. Please don't mix up anybody who gets shot in the head with revelation. Of the heads as it were wounded to death as a country, not a person. It's a country. The country. It's not a person. So it's not like the movies. It's a country. Okay? It's a country. 
there's already been a country that has been wounded, as it were, to death. But the deadly wound is going to be shown to the world to be healed. And all the world will wonder after a system because of one of its heads that was wounded, as it were, to death, but was healed and is quite powerful. And is making its, is about to make a debut. And no one, not one soul is discussing that subject. Because of Hollywood, they think it's a person. It's not a person. There are people who know for a fact that nation is coming back. They know it for a fact. They're not guessing. They know it for a fact. There's nothing anybody can do about it. Nothing. They've already been informed. They know about it. They know life changes that very day, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. And there's a timetable for that. It is not what anybody is discussing. But when it happens, it will add clarity to everyone's life who is involved in prophecy. You'll certainly understand more than a few things when that day comes to pass. It will add great clarity to your lives. But it will also mean the inevitable is taking place. Hmm. Because you guys were born for what? For the days where prophecies would be fulfilled. Remember what Jesus said. That generation shall not pass until all these things are fulfilled, right? What generation? The generation that begins to see all these things. One minute and 15 seconds. It's a small delay. I'm plugging in through a something, right? And it's checking everything for me. It takes about three or four minutes for that to get ready. Then I'll make a direct call. I don't really make calls outside of it. One minute, exactly. Guys, expect more. Expect a lot more. But if you think it's just against uh, Republicans, you're wrong. You're very wrong. You do realize this is a POTUS this is a this is to rid the America of leadership, period. Because something else is in the place. And you guys do remember about that tablet, right? You guys remember about that tablet? Hmm? The tablet with the dates on it? I don't want to put out those days, but uh, 27 and 29, day 27 and day 29 were on that tablet. It's for a later discussion. All right, let me link in, guys, and I should be good to go to call. I should be good to go. Let's see. Let me go blank on this mic for a few seconds, guys. Stand by. The shooter is dead and another casualty, which would make sense. And that's what Amir Safari was saying. Israel Hall was the first one to tell us that the shooter was dead. Israel Hall has just texted me the name of the, potentially the name of the shooter. I'm not going to say it because, you know, I'd be the worst thing I could ever do. It's not confirmed. Not going to say it, but I do see his name. Um, so Fox News is confirming two people are dead. One from the rally 
and the other one must be the shooter. We hope that that's the case, that not two people from the rally. CNN is saying that President Trump just fell and Secret Service are helping him up. So they're not even stating that he was shot. It'll take CNN a week to figure it out. Anyway, let me just say this, um, that uh, um, Mike from around the world should be calling now any moment. Um, But as you can imagine, he might be a little busy, but he was uh, on CLT. He is going to come here. uh, We're hoping any minute now the call will come in. He has confirmed he's going to call. And uh, it's it's an incredible situation. Um, Pastor Paul Michael says he's good to go. He's going to try call. So okay, so I'm expecting Mike to call here any second, and be good to hear his voice. Um, and I'm going to try to get a hold of Bishop Larry Raglan at some point here. Um, after we talk to Mike, uh, we may try to bring him in here to, to get it. Lexi is running uh, interference for me. She's bringing me notes. And, and I think right here we go. Mike from around the world. Mike from around the world. Mike, are you there? Pastor Paul, God bless you, brother. God bless you. God bless you, Mike. Thank you for calling. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a traumatic moment for the, for the nation. How are you feeling, Mike? I'm good. We're on watch, though, Pastor Paul. It's not over. No, it's not, is it? Do you feel that? No. I, I have reports that the shooter's dead. Um, and I have reports that at least one uh, civilian is dead and that maybe as many as eight were shot. We're getting that from intelligence out of Israel. I do have the name of the shooter, but I'm not going to say it because in case that name is wrong and that, and that that's a mistake, but... What have you, has there any info you can share? Well, the uh, Middle Eastern issue, right? Yeah. Along with the American issue. Yeah. Has intersected. And so what we have is a, we have a, quite a few uh, activities taking place here in the, uh, in CONUS, uh, the USA. Quite a few, uh, lots of chatter, obviously. But, um, there are on uh, I guess you could say uh, um, previously unknown entities moving around within the USA right now. Uh, one of the one of the one of the objectives is to remove the seat of leadership period. Now what that means is that means both Democrat and Republican, not just one, but both both. Wow. The removal of both. This is the, now, in other not, words, that not, sounds like that's that. So you're saying to remove the leadership to remove of America to, to eliminate to eliminate. Yeah, then that, that's one of the awful issues taking place right now. I, I did. I don't want to say too much on that because right. You, right. Obviously, we're going to be listened to right now. Right. 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 And uh, but the basic plan is um, a, a a wake up has been given as directed by components of the Middle East, uh, enemies of Israel, have called upon everybody in every location to rid the leadership of uh, this nation. Mike, so there we are. Okay, now, so you're saying that uh, that it appears that because of what happened this morning, Mohammed D.F. was taken out by by Israel this morning. He was the number two man of Hamas. He was the instigator. He was actually the um, the the mastermind of the October 7th raid on Israel. That this could be tied to that as a, as a response. And I'm getting, a, I'm getting a question asked right now. Could, could Antifa be involved? Is there anything like that you're hearing? There are heavier players uh, in motion right now, right? Much heavier players. Now they're going to have a cover story, right? Because they're they're not going to um, disclose. Um, that would be pretty heavy for the nation right now, right? Right. But unfortunately, uh, I'll just tell you now, a second attempt will likely take place, mm. and a third, and a fourth, and a fifth. In other words, once those calls go out, they're not going to stop. Right? They're, they're just not going to stop. And so what uh, 
what they should do right now is is reestablish security measures, uh, protective measures for both immediately. Yes. Uh, yes. And for whatever VPs, uh, whatever whatever you know, people are underneath them, same thing, because they're quite serious. That also means they are prepared for global escalations. Wow. So there are more components at play right now than uh, than what happened in Butler, Pennsylvania. Than it than in seventy five years, actually. Wow. Since World yeah. War Two. Basically yes. yeah. So Mike, what it's, you're saying is so, so you do you agree with me and you brought it up that the the uh, Israelis military operation that took out Mohammed Diaf uh, in uh, Gaza this morning may have been what triggered a worldwide uh, call to go after the leadership of the United States, whether it be President Trump or President Biden or, or, or whoever they can to, to take out the leadership. And so for sure, it, 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 you're saying that there is definitely a call out to take out the leadership of America. To eliminate, to eliminate leadership, yes. Yep. So that when, means when they need that. When we, what do you do to reestablish security? What, what, what would be a scenario? There, there are very strict protocols that will take place, right? And and uh, there, there are they don't want to really issue extreme. That that's going to be the measures are going to be based on the situation, right? For example, if we have um, say we have a couple factories explode, very sensitive factories explode all of a sudden, then obviously they're going to uh, go to a higher level of implementation of that uh, security process and changeover, but they're going to change whatever they have to change um, based on the situation, right? Because they hear the chatter. Now, action is different from chatter. Of course, today has been since actually last night, everything has been a little different, um, but they will, you know, in, 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 in relation to whatever happens, whatever and whatever happens, whatever measure it happens, uh, 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 how heavy that situation will be, they will in turn start locking things down. Right? Uh, for example, you know that communication is going to be first, and so there will be some changes in communication big time today. Right? There's going to be a closer look at right. uh, certain individuals. There are going to be certain uh, places within America that will be heavily watched. Um, NASA has a highway over over our heads, right? There's a highway, a, a um, autonomous vehicle highway over our heads right now. It will likely have patrols. There are going to be patrols on that highway. These are unmanned patrols, but they will be there for instant response. And so quite a few things will change. Right. It, it doesn't cost much to do that, but these certain things will be deployed. And, uh, the bigger problem is not only is uh, not only do they want the elimination of leadership, but we have a global problem because it's not going to stop here in the USA. If 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 now this is but this is my suspicion. Um, we all know what the outcome of the election is going to be. All of us do. We all know. Here's the problem with that. There are certain countries that have an understanding they're not going to be able to operate as they have been operating with a Republican president, right? Yes. And so they, they've been watching these debates as well. They know that if uh, uh, certain individuals get into power, they're going to be shut down and they're not going to be able to do certain things they desire to do, right? So that's going to force them to play their hand early. Whatever they have to do to get in position, right, for for these long durational plans that they used to have, they're going to have to make them almost immediate. Now, this is a, a known issue, right? Right. It's why most armies have assets in place and opposing, uh, they have opposing forces. It's almost like uh, the whole world is in a confrontation right now, but no one has fired a shot. So all this positioning and everything else, it's been established. So, Mike, uh, and they're ready to act on that. Mike, right? we have we do have some information coming in. Uh, Israel Hall just texted me. He said he just got uh, permission to leak this name 
uh, Mark Violets uh, posted on his um, online himself acting like he has a gun in his hand and um, threatening the president, Donald Trump. Now, he's just been arrested. Uh, he was not there or if he was there, but he's been arrested, apparently. He's not the shooter. The shooter is dead. Um, More people are doing that. You know, so there's, and people are going to be. things. Yeah. It's not going to stop. Yeah. It's not going to stop. And he's Antifa. They say this guy is connected to Antifa. But, you know, like you said, it's not going to stop. There's millions of people. There's some, there's some real nuts out there. And, um, you know, people are going to. Be, every person that's ever threatened President Biden or Trump is going to become a suspect. Would you agree? Yeah. Also, you have Iranian operatives here in the USA that are being paid, right? You know how much they, they, they pay a person about $10 million uh, to go and incite uh, or organize violence with, at these protests uh, to act on uh, you know, issues just like today. I wouldn't be surprised. If it was an American, if that American wasn't paid money to do what they're doing, I wouldn't be surprised. You have Iran has they have this ability to enable quite a few people within the USA who have been here for a long time to begin to incite a very deep or, or to instill very deep issues concerning the Middle East and the minds of Americans, who college students and the like to totally convince them that uh you know the world has ended somehow right that uh their world is is about to be destroyed by people who are coming into power so that's why a lot of people are seeing these college kids who have great sympathy towards the gazan situation uh where are they getting their information from how do they develop that sympathy because you have iranian influence in America, you have sleeper cells that are highly active in social media. Social media is like a two-edged sword. Um, it has been responsible for quite a few things, Pastor Paul, quite a few things. Uh, there have been uh, lots of attempts on, on Trump and Biden and some other people, but they've gotten them early. The problem now is Iran has, they have sent out a... a a bulk message to everybody, right? They've got money to pay people to back this up. And so Homeland Security, yeah. uh, DIA, all these different agencies are going to have their hands full tracking communications. I got big time. I got more uh, breaking news, Mike. Uh, Lexi just brought in. <laughs> Eyewitnesses uh, have just said that they saw smoke from the gunfire and that it, it appeared like there was two possible shooters. People are praying and crying in the crowd, uh, uh, Robert F. Kennedy has made a statement. He says, now is the time for every American to step back from this division and pray uh -huh. for President yeah. Trump and his family. Fox News is saying the shooter is dead and two others are dead. And one is also in critical condition at this Pennsylvania rally. Nancy Pelosi has just spoken, says political violence was no place in our country. She's praying for President Trump. Mike, go ahead. It's going to grow. You know what, Pastor, three weeks ago, I talked about this this very scenario. You did. Right? Yes. That if somebody's going to, if they're going to vote, they better pray. They better pray because yes. the hate level is too. You know what? In truth, we don't even need Iranian influence to to amplify hatred in this country for no. activities like this. We're no. doing it ourselves. Yes, people are quite violent uh, here in America. They are. They're quite violent. They don't believe anything until something happens, and then um, it's going to get worse. If they think this is going to stop, it's not. It's going to take much more than this to unify. This nation, the divisions are so incredibly deep. They've been deep for that. People have, um, they have just compartmentalized every single aspect of division caused it to be an individual issue. And unification seems to be almost, uh, what well, seems to be impossible. That's why I said, you know, and just the other week I was asking, what would it take to get this country unified again? Right. What would it actually you take? You did say that. To get this country to unify again. And, and. It just seems like everything that happens, it drives the wedge deeper. 
Now, no doubt you're going to have some people out there that will make this a Democrat Republican issue. They're going to drive that wedge quite deep. Yeah. Then you're going to have polarized sides that are ready to kill each other. Yes. Right. And attempt. See, here's the, the, the fallout from this is an attempt on President Trump is going to be interpreted as the opposing party attempting to end, let's say, in the world, because now President Trump was just a presidential candidate. Now he's essentially a living martyr, which means his message is going to be solid in the hearts of those, right, who accept it, but they're going to be polarized and move to protect every single thing he said, whether he said anything in error or not. And what that means is all this Democrat-Republican stuff, that wedge is going to go quite deep. They're going to try to, to on the news, they're going to attempt to back down off the violent rhetoric, unfortunately. Wow. Uh, that's not going to, that's not going to so, translate to people because right now people are nervous. Right so, now they're nervous. So, Mike, so what you're saying is immediately the, this wedge is going to get driven deeper between the two sides, the red and the blue. And yeah. the truth yeah. is this could be an outside influence to decapitate America, to, to, to drive the wedge deeper. This could actually be coming from outside sources, radical Islam. We could be, we could be talking about, uh, uh, you know, communist, communistic groups. Uh, and it may not be, it may not be uh, political really at all, but, but outside forces trying to turn America on each other. Is that what you're saying? Well, based on, based on the declarations, the communications directly from Iran. Okay. Right. This okay. morning. Yes. Based on them. They were saying that exact thing. So you're saying they were saying that before the shots on Trump? Yes, yes. They issued to America and to uh, other countries, right, to to wake up and to activate and to do what they have to do. And what they normally do, right, they will go and incite violence at protests. That's why people had such sympathy for those in Gaza. Who, Who does everybody think was planting the message? or getting out all the details, causing people to be so sympathetic to the Gazan uh, uh, Iran. Right? They totally twisted that message. They did. They totally twisted and vilified Israel. They vilified Israel. But young kids believed it, right? They absolutely believed it. Why? Because they're on social media. They have their own little tiny parties. And it's very easy for uh, any Iranian influence to infiltrate Ivy League schools, um, you know, this this demographic of young people. And they essentially took that message out to the streets, believed it. They were sympathetic behind it because they can easily relate to the, uh, you know, to some of that isolationism. That's what young teenagers and young people feel anyway, to a degree. And uh, they essentially turn young people against the very value system of this nation. And they effectively did that. Well, this morning. The, the same communication they use then, they use a lot more rhetoric now. The, the, but the issue is they're paying people to do this yes. here in this country. So if you have people, even Americans, who are they're, they're in financial difficulties, right? They're being recruited all the time. All the time they're being recruited, right? You wouldn't believe how many people have been detained for receiving money from Iranian or proxy sources dealing with direct Iranian plans to disrupt this country. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe how many Americans have fallen for this. So regardless of this person, whoever this person is, they're going to have to come up with their cover story because it can't exactly cause everybody to be nervous. But my, my, one of my greatest concerns is that because this has already happened, right? Yes. The words of Marjorie Taylor Greene, are going to spring true in people's minds. Yep. All these, now I'm talking about the hateful things I know. she has said. She, they're they, going to believe them, and then you're going to have people nervous in their homes, armed, ready, and they're ready to act on these things, right? So they're essentially causing American people to go against each other. We're going to get, if we get tied up, I'm telling you right now, that the Middle East will not hesitate Nor will Russia, nor will China hesitate to strike the USA. We're we're very vulnerable. We're so vulnerable right now because this situation will will polarize the American populace, 
And yes, you have will. the enemies of America, whether it be China, Russia, or, you, or, or North Korea, or Iran. They're waiting for their moment. And, and, and oh, by the way, our president we have is, is being shoved out of the White House almost by his own party. I mean, this is the weakest moment we could ever be in. Yep. Would you agree? Yep. Yeah. And then prophetically, well, we all know eventually what happens prophetically. The occupation of Israel for 40 and two months. Yes. Okay. And that cannot happen with the USA uh, unified in power, right? With this yes. military in power. But we're facing uh, such a divisionary tactic right now. It's almost caught everybody off guard. And I fear that people will not humble themselves uh, quick enough or seriously enough to undo the darkness that's been spreading in this wow. time. Wow. Right. Right. Is, You're right, Mike. You're right. It's it's it is a spirit of darkness. It is a spirit of division. And we don't need uh, these rogue members of Congress on both sides of the aisle. Right. Say, you know, stirring up the masses right. and creating and, and, and you know, right. and I can remember the words of, of you know, even uh, Congresswoman uh, Maxine Waters, you know, uh, in, uh, impeach 45, impeach 45, or maybe hearing the words of uh, 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 Rashid Talib. Uh, and, and her dropping 10 straight F-bombs against President Trump. That's the kind of thing. Or, like you said, Ma uh, Margie Taylor Greene and, and Matt Gates or some of the folks on the right seem to have a lot of rhetoric. We don't need it from either side. No, no. Uh, Mike, people are asking, of course, in the chat room, is this the stone steps? We saw the president being taken down the steps by the Secret Service, rushed into a SUV, a black one. They're asking, is this... Was this the stone step moment? Well, I'll tell you, identification of the stone steps in, in that setting, Pastor Paul, he was being escorted, right? He was yes. being escorted. Yes, he was. Um, in, in, that, in, that, in that dream, though, he had two people that escorted him in uniforms I'd never seen at that time, right? They were in uniform. So that means, now that could have been symbolic or something else. Here's how we're going to know it was the stone steps. Um, the, the people are going to be, they're going to be polarized, Right. And then right after that, the, a disaster hits. Right. Dear that's Lord. when that's when 20 million are gone. Dear They're Lord. Just gone. Yeah. But that's right sounds, after the stone steps. That sounds like obviously that could be a, a catastrophe, but it sounds more like a, uh, you know, a, a, a nuclear thermal attack. Yeah. Those were inbound. It looked like inbound yeah. warheads were coming into America. And it, it looked like New York City uh, was was really hit somewhere around that proximity. But I know 20 million were gone. Mike, we have more breaking news were. now. The shooter was on the rooftop. Shooter was on a rooftop. Mm. Uh, Obama has now spoken. He has said absolutely no place for political violence in our democracy. See, Although we don't yet know exactly what happened, he said, we should be relieved that former President Trump wasn't seriously hurt and to use this moment to recommit ourselves to civility and respect in our politics. Michelle Obama and I are wishing him a quick recovery. Mike? Why does it take something like this? Why does it take something every single time it takes something like this to get people to realize we're all human beings? Right? Yes. We're all right here on this earth. What it, you know, it's, it's, it's a marvel to me that people can isolate themselves so much in their own uh, cocoon, so to speak, that they just totally forget about the Lord Jesus, right? Yes. The direction and humility with him. Yes, they do. Nothing, believe it or not, nothing is out of control. Nothing is. Now, the world could get scared from this. They, they may, but nothing is out of control. God knows exactly what he's doing. Amen. But he also knows how to humble us because in the Bible it says we are, we are the key. The believers are the key. Yes. It's, it's all based upon our heart. It, even the end times does not come until there's a falling away of God's people. That's, That's true. when the end times come. Amen. Right. Nothing happens because God is long suffering. So he was telling us, you know, time has been going on like this because we have still been holding on. But when we start changing and falling away, that's when he intervenes a final time. That's yes. when he intervenes. And you know what's happening right now? More and more people 
are emulating these worldly things and they're forgetting about their spiritual foundation, period. And some people are mixing the two, Pastor Paul, and they're not humble. People are not humble. They're, they're, a lot of them are violent. They're engaging in these worldly affairs and they're losing themselves. They, they Have they forgotten their royalty? That they have the authority, right? Yes. To, to essentially cover or uncover things in this world. But if you get two believers who have authority and they're in an argument with each other, neither one are going to cover anything. Amen. The world is going to be left to its own devices and darkness is everywhere. The light is not. So you're warning right now to Christians everywhere. And I am, I agree with you to remain in the spirit, remain calm, remain in the spirit of God. Do not let your emotions or your flesh or your, or, or, or you know, don't jump on the bandwagon and start, pointing fingers and start creating more divis- divisive actions. Don't say things that you will regret. Don't type things that in your social media platform that you will regret. But instead, stay calm and be in prayer tonight. Fast and pray tonight. I'm not going to forget dinner tonight. I'm not going to eat dinner tonight. I'm going to just fast this evening and pray. And, and I believe that uh, we are in the most critical moment of our nation, like you said, in 75 years. So, Mike, tell us. Security has got to hit an all-time high right now. What does that mean? Do we go on some kind of – and we haven't heard from the president yet. We have not heard from the president yet, but will we hear from him tonight? Yeah, you will. But see, this is an election year, right? Now, part of this, all things during an election year stink, and I have to say this. Yeah. This could also be a very elaborate uh, – Ploys, so to speak. And what I, here's what I mean by that. You do have evil people within this country that will, that will take an innocent person or person on the edge and they will train them. They will groom them to do something just like this, right? They already know the person's capabilities and everything else. They'll groom a person to do something just like this to further some sort of political agenda. And I have to say that because this has happened all throughout history. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, so darkness is certainly at work, but it's important that those who believe in Christ, if they really believe in Christ, then believe in Christ. He, he is Lord and King, right? He's Lord and King. Amen. And frustrations and violence is not going to change or alter the situation. It will actually enhance the issue, you know, worse it'll make it worse because if christians if if they don't get it right this time i can almost promise any and everybody out there if we don't get it right this time if people do not and i've been saying this since the beginning of the year past paul if if god's people will not humble themselves and turn and seek the lord's face i mean his true face in these affairs in these matters if they won't do it then we're going to have sudden uh, a sudden um depletion of the populace in all lands in a very short time and it will be a grievous time it's going to be a trial after trial we don't have to have those things if we can just apply what we already know right amen people just like god's people can make a difference in politics too it's not too late for that many people believe they'll say well i can't make a change by myself yes you can that's where it starts just like a match a book of matches is not on fire until somebody strikes a match and then touches the rest. It takes one, right, to get that thing going. It takes one. And it takes one Christian to stay within that realm of faith. And actually standing up is not cowering in a corner. That's not what standing up is. To stand up means you have a value system. Amen. That you won't waver from with the kingdom of God. And you do that everywhere you walk. That means somebody has to speak to some of these folks that are Christians near these people. Like Joe Biden, they're lying to Joe Biden, telling him he's doing a good job. They're right. lying to his face. Right. right. They shouldn't lie to his face. No. Just like they lie to people in foreign countries concerning the border, saying, come to America. You can get asylum. They can't get asylum here. Right. And so they, they're setting people up for failure. Well, Christians could engage issues and situations like that the right way, the faith way, Amen. and things would change. But if we continue to think that somebody in the world is going to fix it, they can't even fix themselves. They're not covered. How can darkness cover darkness? And, and, and some of those people, they don't know 
they're, they're not really as dedicated as somebody who openly gave their life to Christ, right? Is what I'm saying. They, they have no power against what they're facing. We right. do. We've been granted that authority. Um, but will we use it? That's the question. Will we? Will we? We must. We must. And we have to reiterate. You know, I'll be preaching tomorrow morning. And I'm going to address this, obviously. But my and our message tomorrow was Jesus' freedom. Okay? Freedom from sin. Freedom from evil spirits. Freedom from jealousy. Freedom from wrath and rage and, and uh, vindictiveness uh, and accusation. So we must be free from this. We must remain free. We have to, uh, you know, God, Jesus delivered us from the bondage of sin. He put in our hearts something that the devil cannot uh, do, but would like to destroy if he could. And uh, we must be very vigilant. We must be very responsible now. Uh, Mike, I'm, 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 uh, I have a picture just sent to me a moment ago from Israel Hall. That is, it shows President Trump. President Trump on the floor uh, when they got when he went down and they're and they've got him surrounded. It's a close up of him on the floor. It's as if it's as if he's praying. I'm just saying. I mean, just by looking at it, it's a he. No doubt, God came to his mind. No doubt, uh, the, the realization that this is not a game that, that and we're in it. We're in it for keeps, and that he is very. Vulnerable, and so is President Biden, for that matter. As you've been saying, Mike, I want to ask you a question. Monday night starts the Republican convention in mm-hmm. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yeah, Trump is going to be uh, uh, nominated as President of the United States by Thursday evening. Do Do you think they'll even go on with this convention next week? I don't know. It's up in the air. As you know, it's going to be their uh, decision. It's going to be their decision to do that. If, but but right now, it, it's a very dangerous time. And uh, I, I'll give you everybody the unfortunate side. Anytime something like this happens, they're taught to display the resiliency. Here's what that means. Despite the actions taken today, they're going to go out there like nothing ever happened. Right. Yeah. They're going to be defiant and go out there like nothing ever happened. They, they used to do this for the sake of the people. Here's the problem. The enemy right now is of our own household. Yeah. In fact, we don't know who the enemy is. No. Right. You manifest in just about anybody. And these gatherings are going to prove to be quite, uh, quite dangerous. But there's something else, Pastor Paul. OK. Do you not know that through this action? Right. This will be, I, I, I can't shake the feeling, this is going to be repeated with more than just President Trump. I just can't shake that. It's going to be repeated. And when it does, it could alter the structure of our government going forward, right? Because nobody is installed yet. And they're going to have to make some emergency uh, command authority changes. Should, should one of the two of them, Brian, uh, be harmed. I, I don't wish harm upon anybody. No, no. I don't. But we live in a country, and the enemy is right here in this land. We are a country who has everybody from every other country in this country. Yes. That's what we are. And so we don't know people's loyalties and their ideologies. Um, there will be attempts on both, on, on both who seek a, a seat yes. right? as president. There are going to be attempts on both. And that's, that's, it's, I know, and that's very destabilizing to the country. This, what has happened this afternoon, this evening is extremely destabilizing of the United States. It uh, has put this country uh, on, on, on notice. As you just said, we uh, don't know who did this. We don't know if the Russians did it. The Chinese did it. We don't know if the Iran did it. We don't know if Atifa did it. We don't know who did it, a political uh, uh, a warfare. We've seen lawfare. We've seen all kinds of uh, attempts on both sides of some very nasty things. And that's the first thing. When you don't even know who your enemy is in a situation of this uh, so critical, it then causes people's minds to wander now, uh, um, yep. and, and start pointing fingers and and uh, rushing to paranoia. judgment, yeah, paranoia, yep. exactly. So, 
So, okay, Mike, so we're going to go into Milwaukee next week. We're going to go into Milwaukee. Um, we're going to go to Chicago in August for the Democrat convention, which is already uh, a mess with the, with the Democrats completely ripped apart right now. What do you see happening? Uh, is what? Not safe. It's just not safe. They may have to come up with some, uh, they may have to do things a bit differently. This, regardless of who did this, right? You, uh, you face this issue. Suppose they do not release to the public the background of the individual who attempted. Um, right, right. They may not. To, to do that. If they don't, the entire Democratic or, or the Republican Party and the Democratic Party are going to start speculating as to who it may be. Yeah. Uh, because of that, it's going to change uh, some security measures because that will essentially cause two enemies to look at each other. Now, right now in this country, we have Democrats and Republicans. Let's go ahead and face it. They're enemies. There have been some visceral things that have happened between the two. They don't exactly embrace each other either, right? They don't. And what's been implanted within the hearts of these people has been over multiple years, right? This started with, uh, you know, beginning with the Obama uh, administration going forward. So there's a, a buildup of a, a, a quite a, yeah. just a nasty hatred between yes. the two. yes. Whatever power that is has embedded itself in the hearts of people. And so what normally happens if they don't identify to the public exactly who this person is, what their background is, they do what this. they were influenced from, it, they don't do that. It's going to cause people to think of their own theories. And Pastor Paul, we're in a time that's where dangerous. people will act on their theories. Yeah, that's They're going dangerous. to act on them. Because they'll talk to other people about their theories, and then all of a sudden, you may have confront large confrontations of Republican and Democratic, uh, uh, you know, the populace, you know, getting together about to have a shootout or something. Yeah, so you're, 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 that'll happen within about a 24-hour period. We need to have a. We, we, okay, so what we know right now is the shooter is dead. We know he's dead. That's been announced. We also know two people, two spectators in the rally are dead. At least that's what Fox News is reporting. We also know another spectator in the rally is in critical condition. There may be others that are shot. Uh, we, we, and we know Trump was hit, but he's going to be okay as it, he was hit in the ear. Um, uh, we don't know. We know the shooter is dead. We don't know if there was any other shooters than him. What we need is his name and his background is what you're saying. Hang on, we got some yeah, more coming yes. in. Okay, something just yes. coming in. Three by okay, here we go. Now we know three bystanders are dead. Three are dead. And the shooter is dead. And uh President Joe Biden is going to speak very soon. Yeah. Do you guys have eleven wounded? I do not. I have eight wounded. Do you have eleven wounded? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Anyway, I guess okay. it'll climb up to that number. Yeah. But um Okay. Yeah, they're gonna have to they're are, gonna have to uh, is that including the three is that I wonder if that includes the three that were killed or is that eleven others wounded besides the dead, I wonder. No, uh, that doesn't include the dead people. That yeah. that's wounded. That include that's uh so Mike just this, a higher number this makes me think I mean I, I guess there's guns that that can be used that can shoot that many people in that amount of time that quickly. Uh, that would be 11 people wounded, three people dead. And Heidi's uh, sources are saying Trump took a sh shoulder. He was also hit in the shoulder as well. And is that Heidi's source? I do see a medical flag on, I do see a medical flag on Trump. So um, you do yeah. see a medical flag on Trump. I'll give some details in. Yeah, I'll give some details. Okay. In. So my. She also says for sure uh, confirmed one female killed. One female was killed. And because uh, Heidi had a friend at the rally. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't know. Still waiting to hear from a friend. Okay, so we know of the three by bystanders, Mike, the reporting. Three bystanders are dead. One was a, a, a female. We know President Trump was hit in the ear for sure, but there's reports now that he also took a bullet in the shoulder. And uh, the shooter, we know, is dead. We don't know if there's any more than one shooter or not. And then Mike is reporting, Mike, Mike uh, from around the world here is reporting that also uh, 11 people are wounded. Uh, so, Mike, your thoughts? 
Well, the movements are starting to happen. There seems to be some problems. They're watching coastal waters right now. Right now, they're watching coastal waters. Wow. Right? You mean on both both coasts? There are active tracks. Okay. On, there are active tracks, on the, especially outside of Florida. There's some active tracks. That normally means there are some uh, uh, beacons out there that don't belong to us. Okay. So that means foreign countries are a little more active than usual right now uh, concerning the USA and proximity to the USA, which leads me to believe uh, because the whole world is aware of what's happening. President Trump, the whole world is. And I'll have to say it again. If they ever find us in a position where we are confused, turn inwardly, right? We have our hands tied. They will not hesitate to strike. They, they will strike us. Many people don't know this except those who have served time on the DMZ. Right now, North Korea has a nuclear missile pointed at every major city in the USA. You know that? This has been, this has been for many, many years, right? Okay. Uh, this is just that happens. Anybody who's, who's been on the DMZ has been briefed. Uh, they know about those missile areas, right? The one thing nobody knows is if these missiles are actually operational or not, right? But they are they are targeting specific cities. Well, they know those have been changed in the last two months, all of them. Yeah. All of them have brand new warheads in those um, uh, areas and lots of equipment has been put in there. They estimate at least $20 million a piece has been put in each one of those sites, um, so we know that North Korea is ready to strike the USA at any given moment. Mm. We also know that China, what what statements they made to Putin and Iran, they said, um, you know, they're the country of patience, and this is their this is their leadership. Uh, this is the entry into their leadership years. They keep saying, wow, uh, something to do with the dragon, right? And the global watch the dragon has over the world right now, just a global watch. Uh, so they are convinced that somehow they are chosen, uh, chosen people to 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 okay, watch events that are happening. Right President now. Uh, uh, Trump, I mean, excuse me, President Biden is is speaking. Uh, he's with his doctors. Uh, they apparently he, he's uh, been doing well. He's live right now. I plan on talking to them shortly. I hope Coherent. when I get back to the uh, telephone. Look, there's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. It's sick. It's one of the reasons why we have to unite this country. We cannot allow for this to be happening. We cannot be like this. We cannot condone this. And so, and I want to thank the Secret Service and all the agencies, including the state agencies, that have been engaged in making sure that the people who, and we have more detail to come relative to other injured, other people maybe injured in the audience. I don't have all that detail. We'll make that available to you. I may be able to come back a little later tonight, but we'll put out a statement if we don't, if I'm not able to give it for, if it's not convenient for you all. But the bottom line is that the Trump rally was a rally that he should have been able to can be conducted peacefully without any problem. But the idea, the idea that there's political violence or violence in America like this is just unheard of. It's just not appropriate. And we, everybody, everybody must condemn it. Everybody. I'll keep you informed. And if I I'm able to speak to the to Donald. I'll I'll let you know that as well. But so far, it appears he's doing well. Number one, number two, that they're thoroughly investigating what happened to anyone else in the audience. I have we have some reports, but not final reports. And every agency in the federal government. I'll be, and I'm going back to, to my phone to speak with the federal agencies that are being put together again to give me an updated briefing. Has anything happened? They learned any more in the last couple hours. So thank you very much, and I hope I get to speak to them tonight, and I'll get to back to you if I do, okay? I don't know enough to, I, I, have, I, have an, I have an opinion, but I don't have any facts. So I want to make sure we have all the facts before I make some comment, any more comments. Thank you. Are you worried about the was this security failing? Was President okay, that's President Pre Biden with that President, short statement uh, there again. He's Biden in Rehoboth, Delaware, has, uh, for the weekend. Just spoke uh, again. President Biden just spoke. Um, Mike, your thoughts on uh, what the president just said? Well, he's he's uh, it's uh, you know actually he said what we just said, didn't he? He did. <laughs> 
He said exactly. He what said we the just same said. thing we did. Maybe he was listening, but I mean, thank God he said it because he did. And you know, he he's going. To, you heard him say that uh, the president uh, Trump is doing is doing well, uh, and that he is trying and he wants to speak to him. And I think that's important. He wants to get on the phone and he wants to talk to Donald Trump and check on him and see how he's doing. And that's the beginning of healing of a nation uh, is to have. I hate. To, do we have to get here before we can see that? I don't know, but yeah, yeah, Pastor Paul. Because I guarantee you, right now, Pastor Paul, you have. Here's here's one of the bigger issues. Let me ask you this, Pastor Paul. That's my question. Okay. What would it take for us to see each other as human beings again? There have been so many stories and lies and theories and more things told. And people are just looking at each other with this uh, through the filter of what they've been told, right? Yes. That's, that's how we see each other, through what we've been told. Um, there are people out there, you know, I guarantee you people are going to say, well, you know, Trump is the Antichrist because he's been shot in the head. That's ridiculous. Um, that's ridiculous. Well, just so people understand. Yeah, they're already saying is, it. Here's, yes. here's my understanding, Pastor Paul. Here's my understanding, right? Okay. In Revelation 17, it says that the seven the seven uh, heads of the beast are seven mountains. And those seven mountains are seven nations of which kings are presidents of. So it was a nation, as it were, wounded to death, whose deadly wound was healed. The world wondered after the beast because of a nation that had a deadly wound right. by the sword or by war, but it did live. It's not a, it's not a human being like they show in Hollywood. It's a, it's right. a nation that was wounded or seven that heads was, with, you know, with, the, done away the, with yeah, these seven, these seven nations that all were blasphemous. Right. Not right. a, not a, not a, they're thinking a lot of people think that's a person because Hollywood comes to mind. They interpret things by Hollywood. And that's, um, I think it's, um, well, that's not my belief. I, they're nations. Yeah. Anyway, um, well, let me answer your question you asked me, and that is, what does it take? Yeah, what does it, it take it, for it, us it, to it, see each other as human beings? It generally, what will it take? Unfortunately, it generally takes, Mike, bloodshed. Uh, it takes someone being killed, and it takes someone being wounded or, or, or something. This, what we're witnessing right now, it, it will be the beginning of people saying, we got to cool this thing down. All of us have got to cool this thing down. Now, the enemy, whoever the enemy is, as you said earlier tonight, they're going to try to ra rally this up. They're going to try to use this to drive the wedge even deeper in America. We they're really, you know, and they're, they're doing, doing it right it. now. Right yes. now, they're active right now. And it's, uh, it is. It's unfortunate. And you know, you know what? Here's here's one of my major concerns. Because people believe they see other people through what they heard, not what they know, but what they heard. Because a lot of a lot of us don't know President Trump, a lot of us don't know President Biden. We only know That's what right. we've been told. We only know what we have observed. And if it, even even like he just spoke, right? I guarantee a lot of people they they heard him, but they heard him through what somebody else said, or they heard they they're hearing them through a filter. Right now, for a Christian, that's that's not exactly what the Lord says. It's certainly not what Proverbs says. Because if we don't have direct knowledge of, if I don't have direct knowledge of something, I just don't know it. Right? I right. I cannot go by Here's anybody's saying. You word can't take second. because I've yeah. I've met some of these people behind you know behind the door behind their public faces. And and sometimes it turns out there's some pretty awful people, but sometimes it turns out they're they're just like you and I. Well, not just like you and I, but you know what I mean. They're yes. they're they're just human beings. Yes, right. Uh, some people believe in their cause. If they believe in their cause, they're going to be sympathetic behind their cause, and it's really based on the background of a person, right? Like like take for example a a somebody who worships Buddha, and that's all they know. If they worship Buddha and that's all they know, how could a Christian ever approach that person if they hate everything about that person and refuse to listen to anything they say? Then that means that Christian is going to be ineffective in that person's life. But a Christian who can see the person being a human being who, right. is, who, is, who is captured by the enemy, a Christian will have patience with that person enough right, to say, no, 
I desire that person to live and pray for that person by the heart, right? Because if they believe in Buddha, they're deceived already. I know YouTube may not like that, but if, they, if they're worshiping in these other things, right. by perspective of the Christian religion, they are deceived. And so a Christian, wouldn't a Christian say, wait a minute, I don't want Satan to destroy that person. I'm going to intercede in that person's life. That's right. And communicate with them. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Yes. But somehow in this nation, even with this issue right here, it's the populace. It's, it's certain people, they don't care who dies. No, they, they don't, don't care who suffers. They only care that their established views are accomplished. Yeah. And I hate to tell them that's never going to be enough because once you have that spirit, if I don't care what happens, I want it this way or the highway. Anybody who has that spirit terrible is suffering from a controlling spirit, a, a spirit of domination. And it never, it never can be satisfied. No. Everybody I've ever met in my life who had that spirit is never satisfied. They can meet their goal every single day. They're never satisfied. They are destructive by nature. They will, they, they, it seems like they're covered in spirits, spirits of violent and hatred. They, they will turn around so quick and play the victim and turn around and hate again. They just do they're like bipolarism and every single psychological disorder you can think of yes. mixed together. These people will not change. And if, if 20 million people died, those same people will not, they're still not going to change. They're not going to change until they're those, removed those people, from the face of the earth. Because those people have don't do not have the best interests of gone. everyone in in their heart. They don't have the That's best. Right. They're yeah, gone. they they're they're, they're not going to make it. And you're you're so right, Mike. You're so right. Uh, and they're out there, Pastor. Paul. Yes, folks. So, we, we did play tonight. We did play. Uh, you heard live when President Biden spoke. He he thanked the Secret Service. For protecting President Trump. He said the bottom line is no political violence can happen in America. No place for it. He also said he wants to speak with President Trump. He hopes to get to speak to President Trump. And if he does, he'll come back out here later and give us an update. He also said that every agency in America is working on this. Mike, you could confirm that, couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone must yeah. condemn the shooting," sure. he said. When he says every agency, can you tell us what are the what are we? I know, can you tell us Secret Service? Yeah, but FBI, all CIA, them, who, who who's doing it? Everyone? Well, all of them are committed to it. This morning, um, actually, last night when Israel made their move, right? Yeah, and uh, they had that response. That's when everything began. Everything began with Israel. You think this everything is? Began do you with think this is tied to that? Do you think that this literally is tied to this event today? It, you know, it could be passed, but it's a high probability it could be. And even if it's not, it's certainly spiritually connected in a big way, you know, because yeah. that, what happened in Israel and, and uh, with Hezbollah and with Iran getting involved, Hezbollah, that was uh, that was that altered uh, that altered everybody's activities today. Everybody's active. Wow. Believe it or not, with, with, regardless of people like Israel or not, I'm telling you now what Israel determines the way this world will go or won't go because Israel is the birthplace of, of our faith, right? Right. And everything is tied to them. Everything is. And everything is tied to those grafted into the branch. And when that happened with Israel, every time something happens to Israel, if it happens to them physically, we go through it spiritually. If it happens to them spiritually, we go through it physically. I've noticed that. Have you noticed that? Oh, yeah. Everything right. they go through, we go through too, one way or the other. So there's no separation in activities. Every time uh, when, when they get, you know, somebody's retaliating against them, something happens to us. You know, internally or externally, something happens to us. But I believe that that was the, uh, you know, that was a starting point, either directly or spiritually. It was a starting point because nobody attempted to shoot President Trump yesterday, did they? No. And uh, but today they did. And I suspect now for those who are Democrats, believe it or not, both presidents are in danger. Not just one. Both are in danger. Yes. And, and they you want know, the he leadership. Of America eliminated. Yes, even John F. Kennedy Jr. has has left a statement in which he he really said that the the division in this country has to stop. And um, I'm looking for his quote, but uh, basically he uh, he said he wants everyone to be praying 
for Trump. Yeah, here it is. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. says, now is the time for every American to step back from the division and pray for President Trump and his family. Um, so that was a very significant statement for him. I know he means that, too. I know that's from he his heart. He does. He does. That's why they won't fully embrace him, though. No, I know. Because he does. He does. He does mean, care. <laughs> he knows what the show is about. He yeah. knows what being a civilian is about. You know, being part of the USA as a populace and leadership. He knows what the difference is. And yeah, he meant it. Unfortunately, Paul, they'll do some people will do just that. For now, they'll take a step back. They may pray for President Trump. But they're going to go right back into violence. If 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 as soon, it's going to take something heavy. But listen, I'm. I don't want to say it, but I'm going to say it. Go ahead. Personally, I do not believe the Lord is pleased with uh, the level of violence and the and the too many too much darkness is hovering around. Right? Amen. Amen. And but Christians are taking a back seat. Not you, Pastor Paul, you're up in the front, but many Christians are taking a back seat, right? You don't even know if some of the people in in Washington are Christians or not. They no. will not display their Christianity before men because they'll lose their jobs. Right. Lose their position. I understand that. But their value systems are poor, right? There are people who claim to be Christian and they, you know. They'll say, thank you, Lord, one second, curse out everybody the next. Yeah, uh, That's darkness. And that's, that's not darkness. being a Christian. That's darkness. Because there's no way Christ can reside within a person. And out of the mouth is coming foul stuff. In the word of God, it says, let no corrupt communication be in your mouth. You know, uh, we're not to do that. We're to have, you know, all manner. We're, we're to abstain from all, all appearances of evil. Amen. We're to have holy communication, right? Plus, if it's not edifying the body of Christ, then the Lord says, why speak in the first place? If it's not going to build up the body of Christ. So there are a lot of people out there that appear to be, or they're trying to appear to be Christian, uh, but they're not, and they're dragging people straight down to the pit. My hope is, because it's not going to stop here, folks. I'm telling you, that this is going to either totally de-escalate right now, in this small season, or it will escalate, and it's going to go beyond the borders of containment. Oh, dear Lord, help us. It's going to go beyond it very quickly. So we, we have one of two directions. My hope is that we can see what's happening and really consider the implications of some of the rhetoric yes. that we enter into. That we can actually see it and start looking at each other as human beings again. right? Amen. Not Not some... Uh, you know, brain eater or something like that. And if you see a person out there caught in sin, consider something. Consider that they are captured by Satan. Now, the question is, if Satan had a person in his grasp, who agrees with that? I don't. No. I do not agree with the enemy. No. Uh, having a human being in his grasp to destroy, I will never agree with Satan. No. Never. I'll never agree with him. But whenever we say... That person is done for. Oh, we don't. We're, we that, can't that's do almost that. like speaking the opposite well, we of can't. the living God. Yeah, we can't. If he do allows that. them breath, if he allows them breath today, there's who hope. are we to say they don't need breath? There's hope. If the the Bible says that as long as there's Absolutely. breath, there's that's hope. That's my whole point. And we're that's not to point. pass judgment. It is not on us to pass the judgment. We who are we? We didn't go to. I didn't go to a cross. I didn't die for anybody. Plus, it's coming. Judgment is coming. It, it, that's people right. Are in trouble. Even, you know, I may be in trouble. So who knows? We we have to really, and then the Bible says we're we in our salvation with fear to. and trembling. So we have to strive. Amen. But I will never agree with Lucifer, and I hope that everybody out there will no longer. They, they won't condemn another human being in the clutches of yeah. Satan, but will actually desire for them uh, to be free. I amen. BP Earth Watch just left a comment. It was, and It's a very interesting one. It's a very uh, eye-opening one, if you remember. The, the, we have already, somebody is dead. There's a man that uh, supposedly is the shooter and he's dead. Now, that's the same thing they said in Dallas in 1963, that one man shot the president from the sixth floor of the, of the, of the building that was almost an incredible shot. I guess you have to, you do have to, unfortunately, you have to also keep an open mind 
that um, uh, that uh, how many shooters were they tonight? Was the man who was shot and killed? Was he actually the shooter? These are going to bring these questions. Well, oh, I'm yeah. sure they we'll, need to clarify. They got to clarify, they clarify this, right? quick. Yeah, because if not, it, we're going to go over the edge, and it could be. You have to entertain. You have to always remember, things can always be conspired. Right. Right. This could be some this could be a ploy. This could be a tactic. This we don't know what it is. That's why it has to be defined for the public's ears, because if it's not and if it's not um, if it's not done truthfully, uh, certain things are going to escalate. They're going to escalate out of control. And, and it's only 24 hours is what normally happens. So tomorrow we're going to see the outcome of this. Yeah. I, you know, I pray for President Trump that he's really OK, because in a lot of cases, Things like this will happen. They don't report everything. There are problems at the hospital, secondary issues and internal bleeding and things like that can take place. I was just involved in a, there was a shooting, not more than, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. They thought they, you know, the bullet went in and out. Yeah. But they missed a bullet, right? Oh. They missed the bullet and it was too late. It and, was too late. And the person died. Uh, so that happens. Plus, consider this. Every two weeks, there's been an attempt on one of these heads of states, their lives. Okay. So every, okay, so, I mean, around the world, you're saying this is Every happening. two weeks, yes. Every two weeks. Every two weeks. And in America, not only are there attempts upon the presidents, um, Biden and Trump, but there have been attempts on, certain, or on Congress members as well. And there are going to be attempts on judges. That's also happening. Oh, I have right been worried about the Supreme Court justice. Yeah, they foiled many attempts already. See, a lot of times they won't report it because they've right. already foiled it, right? Right. The problem is now the communications network is so vast and so heavy, full of traffic, they can't possibly cover every aspect of it because if they chase down every story past the poll, they're going to be, you know, here's they a don't report. have enough resources. All right, now that. here's a report in the chat room, of course. I can't, you know, I, I I'm just going to, here's what they're saying. 11 people wounded, three people right. dead, Trump shot twice, 16 shots fired. Now, I don't know if, uh, Richard, I don't know if that's just, you're asking a question, is that what they're saying, or uh, is that some information? But I no, do, I don't know. I know this. They'll clarify. They'll clarify. They have to. Trump, yeah. Trump may clarify. have been hit in the shoulder as well as in the ear. That's very possible. Um, I don't know. I know he got hit in the ear. Ain't no doubt about that. But did he also take one in the shoulder? I don't know. Um, but we do know that there are three people dead. Uh, we know that the president was shot. We know that um, the shooter is dead or the person they're identifying as the shooter is dead. And we know that uh, it could be somewhere between eight and 11 people wounded, as Mike has been saying. He's heard 11. Um Apparently. Yep. There's eleven. Okay, and so we're just going to have to do what what we've what Mike what you've said tonight. I think the wisdom you've given, the over, what I'm hearing you say, that there we don't know who the enemy is. Uh, there's several different possibilities. Uh, there are chips in the water. Nations are moving. Assets, military assets are moving. Uh, every, according to the president, Biden, every asset or excuse me, every agency in America is involved now. Um, and what I hear, I hear you say, Mike, is we have to pull together. We cannot get involved. We cannot let the rhetoric. We can't just start pointing fingers. We got to stay calm and recognize that this is the work of darkness. This is the work of the devil. It is. And we've got to pray as Christians. We have to be the light that shines in this darkest hour in this nation in so many years. Amen. So, Mike, I, I want to thank you for coming on, taking the time um, tonight. And uh, I think I'm going to do what you said. Go off. I'm going to pray and, and I'm going to pray heavily and fervently for President Trump and for President Biden's protection as well and pray for this nation. I believe that's right. Yeah. Yeah, because we do right now tonight. We do have terroristic activities taking are forming up in this nation tonight. So it's not over, unfortunately. I know it, Mike. If something else breaks loose, we may try to get a hold of you again. Um, but if somebody not, will let me know, Pastor Paul, that's good to go. Okay. If you got to get a hold of me, just put out that call. The 
they let me know. They're Don't pretty good at that. They're pretty good at it. All right. Yeah, they're pretty good at that. Mike, thank you. Thank you again so much for your time and, and expertise and, and for your faith in Jesus Christ and your love for America and your service. Thank you. Well, it's always an honor to assist, Pastor Paul. God bless you, brother. God bless you. We love you. All right. Thank you.